I'm happy to introduce Jay Du, and we'll give him the floor. Thanks, John. Um, yeah, I want to say first of all, uh, the organizers will invite me to give a talk. I feel great honor to speak here. We so many fun mathematicians listen to my talk. And uh, secondly, of course, congratulations, John. And then, <laughs> <laughs> congratulations. Over about uh, three years ago, I remember uh, Jen was sitting in my office in Sydney talking about mathematics. At some point, then just the point, uh, this, I remember this was in my notes. Forty years ago, from MSRI, I just feel you know, unbelievable. Can you remember the details of this note taken forty years ago? So that's somewhat a shock to me. So I have a photo here. That's nineteen ninety MSRI program. So it's a six month program. I was lucky to be there. I think you can find that. Then the, also in the picture. So that's the uh, so is the location or the option location? Yeah, that's the MSI the in front door. I mean, the up here. Yeah. 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 Yes. yes. Misery, it's a called misery, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it used to be the downtown. Like the downtown. No, that's the shield yeah. up there. Yes. Well, here's another one. Eight years later. So that was the first uh, conference in China. We were all in Shanghai. Then uh, I believe uh, four years later, then I both visited uh, Osaka. University, city university. Yeah, we lived in the same guest house. I believe that time was my very low, personally, my very low point, but I had a really, really wonderful two weeks, I think, with Dan's family. And uh, I think I became two of the shushus, you know, of uh, his daughters. <laughs> And the uh, Shushu means the in Chinese it's uncle. Okay. So so I think since then I think our friendship lasts forever. So that's that's all at the beginning I want to say. All right, here's my talk, the plane. Uh, you can see I will briefly talk about the motivation, the history. Then we talk about the, the idea I want to start with the uh, take a trip of algebra and gradually build up the uh, uh, queer quantum supergroup. And uh, the, the queer quantum supergroup, I feel like it's, it's, it's like a monster, you know, it's very hard to, 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 to tame, you know, so. But anyway, we did some, uh, we did some work, uh, but my talk will be very technical and uh, combinatorial compared with uh, Alun's talk yesterday, he, he was kidding. He said he is compensatory, but not really compensatory. <laughs> okay, all right. <clears throat> so here's the introduction. So the structure of a group with a BM pair is hidden in its Y group. So I believe everyone agrees with that. For example, if you look at pairwise subgroups, right? You have Pairwise subgroups, by groups, of, but then you have also pairwise subgroups of the of the original group. So that's pretty clear. Uh, the representation here of semi-simple complex DL with hidden somewhat deeply in its associated Heckel. So that's an interesting conjecture. Talking about the deconcerted decomposition numbers given by the value of the cultural interpolum. Now, of course, it, it's a theorem now. So I'm interested in the following, uh, the structure of a quantum linear group or super group is hidden in the Heck algebra of symmetric group, of symmetric group. So while that's the case, I probably make it a, a little bit more detailed. So 
you think about the heck out of uh, any Cox group, right? It's presented by certain generators. Then you see, they have uh, a basis uh, labeled by the elements of Cox group. Then with respect to this basis, you have the following multiplication formula. Uh, every generator hit on the basis vector, you can easily write down uh, this uh, result. It's, it's, it gives you the matrix representation of the regular module of the head count. Okay. So, so from this uh, basic uh, structure, uh, together with uh, just a, a sequence of uh, constructions, uh, it is possible to construct a basis for the quantum linear group such that its regular representation u u is given by explicit multiplication formula between the generators and the basis elements. So while this is the case, so of course, this is a, a beautiful result from Bailey's and Lutzi in person in 1990. So here's the result. The quantum general linear group, uh, oh, sorry, I used GRN here, but it, it's all right, now. Nah. GRN, nah. and uh, you have generators, and you have also a basis presented by LJ. Then you have the following multiplication formula. So in other words, here are this basis, okay? The generator hit on basis, you know the matrix nah, with respect to this basis. Of course, this is the very beautiful in the original result. Yeah. Okay. So, so when we do such a construction for a quantum group uh, by its associated hack algebra as a new development in the theory of the sure viability. So I want to briefly, quickly mention sure viability. So you have a natural representation of GRN, then you have two actions, uh, the universal investing algebra and the symmetric group. So these are commuting action that well gives you two algebra homomorphism. Then from the two algebra homomorphism, you can talk about uh, double centralized property. Ah, so this is the first label, double centralized property. Second level, you have the uh, algorithm of payments, you sure functors, etc. Then I want to add one more label, which is the uh, structure connection. So basically, uh, you can start with the hack algo, then you can gradually construct the regular representation of the quantum linear group. Well, I should mention another structure connection, which is the uh, presenting future algorithm in terms of the generator similar to the quantum groups. So that's basically Dante Giacinto's original work. All right. So when Bailey's and Lutzi McPherson did this work, they, they have a shortcut. Uh, they use the uh, geometric interpretation of uh, future algorithms so they can get it done fairly quickly of these multiplication formulas. Okay. But uh, my point is I want to start with heck out. Then I do step by step to get the construction. So we have a little publication too, which uh, just uh, gives you from the hack algebra, how do you get the step? Uh, just to do a sequence of construction, eventually get the quantum constructed. So let me remind you, this slide I, I borrowed from previous talks. So here's the, so you see, I make this the diagram looks like, uh, can you imagine? Austria and Mark, right? <laughs> then I put uh, what I'm going to talk about here, the box, the sure by Olszewski theory, which is related to the quantum queer supergroup. So I believe this is the monster in Western Australia, which is, I just checked that 6.3 times larger than California. It's a huge area in Western Australia. Only Perth is the, is the city. Other places, you have a lot of monsters there. Okay, end of the project. Uh, construct the quantum field supergroup using hacker for the L.
So somewhat to the hacker group with the elder praise, the kind of a by group royalty the group for which he being picked. Justification of the product, I already mentioned uh, in the diagram. Oshevsky could uh, kind of a sure viability uh, for this uh, case. So you have at least the epimorphism from the quantum queer supergroup uh, to the endomorphism out of the natural foundation here, tensor R times, then hector crib for the hector crib for the algebra acts on this. So then, uh, because this is a little bit uh, quite uh, you know different from uh, what we want to do, so we try to interpret this as a certain endomorphism algebra of permutation of queer permutation models. So once they are doing permutation, kind of permutation model, you can do a lot of combinatorics, uh, especially with the help of the young students, you do a lot of fairly complicated calculations. Uh, eventually you will get what you want. Almost 10 year efforts, you see? It starts with uh, 2014, during my first graduate, I mentioned that at the beginning, right? She did it. She was uh, in Sydney and uh, uh, founded by Australian Mass Council, you know, so that's, that's a starting point. But you see, the old case, you know, we need to looking at kind of a multiplication formula, but there are many old generators in the queer case. We look at the multiplication formula. This is just impossible by that time. We just feel like maybe we don't have such a nice thing exists. So we feel probably uh, the world are not that good in this part, okay? So, but we feel like we still want to do something. So what happens if V equals one? Not the classical case. Can we do? Yeah. So after some years, this is okay. On the other hand, we also try well without using hack algebra. Can we do something else? For example, we use directly constructed uh, regular representation by the super uh, polynomial super algebra. It was also successful. So that this means convince us something must be there. It's only the time we can find it now. Okay. So here's a, a list of reference. We did the, the previous work that makes, makes us, you know, we, we should do, continue to do this work. So a roadmap of the construction. So I start with some special elements in the hexagon for the algebra. It's, a, it's a not that long list. Uh, it's okay. Then I look at some kind of a commutation formula between these special defined elements. Now we need that in now, at some point. Then we just uh, introduce the uh, uh, queer Kyushu super algebra and it's a natural basis. Now this is a, a joint work with uh, uh, Jin Kui Wan, who's uh, one of the students of uh, Wei Chang. Yeah, she did it a senior year. And uh, actually, I, I should say, uh, Jin Kui taught me about this queer business, you know, uh, during his her one year visit. Uh, her one year visit. Then we look at the fundamental multiplication formula, the most basic stuff, right? Then next standardization everything, because if you want to link what you have discovered to the quantum supergroup, you have to standardize a lot of things, uh, including signs and including changing, you know, this uh, Q, parameter Q to square root of Q, et cetera. Then from the uh, standard multiplication formula here, basically these are coming from fundamental multiplication formula. Then you introduce following Bayesian ultimate persons is a very long element. Then look at the multiplication formula for this long element. That's very important step. Once this is done, so you are almost there in making your uh, quantum queer supergroup into the direct product of these queer queer super elements. So you are able to prove this is an injective. You are able to describe a basis of the image 
and they are able to now the multiplication formula uh, between the basis and the generators. Okay. So, what is the why do you spend so much time you are interested in this? Because if you can finish that job, you can have the integral theory, uh, the show by at the integral level. Then you can talk about representation at the root of unity. Then now, recently, I just realized, you know, we, we, our, our approach could be uh, used to define, for example, by involution for the quantum queer supergroup. We tried hard at, at the beginning, but now we find a different way. Then you can have canonical basis here and modify quantum queer supergroups, et cetera, et cetera. So you can do a lot. So these are the two papers that one has completed and the second one, uh, we are finalizing the paper. I believe we should be, it should be out for uh, in, in, in a few months, hopefully two months. All right. Okay, head clip with the L. So here, here the L, I skip this uh, uh, second section, head clip with the super L and some special elements. So this is uh, for my roadmap, okay? So I am the uh, commutative ring. Uh, I do it very general at the beginning. Then you define normally the triple day out over here. And scoop CR, which has um, R generator, C, little C1, et cetera, CR, and the satisfying these relations, okay? So what is the heck a triple the super algebra? Well, it's uh, associated R algebra with uh, uh, even generators. Now, and all the generators, you see, and the such find the following additional relations. So these uh, relations together with, uh, these are the uh, brain group relation for half algebra part. And these are the commutation relation between CI and TI. So basically three sets of relations. Uh, and uh, it has a natural basis, uh, just like half algebra, you have the, uh, uh, C to the A, which is the product of C1, A1, et cetera, CR, AR, where the exponents are plus or minus uh, zero or one, uh, and the TW, that's the hack algebra part. So with this, you can easily write down uh, the structure constants uh, relative to the spaces and about the generators. So I, I just put down the constant here, you see? So if CI hit on this base element, you can easily write down in two cases. Ah. Now if TI hit on this uh, typical basis element, you have four cases depends on, you know, AI zero, AI plus one, zero, et cetera, zero, zero, or one, zero, or zero, one. So basically you have a kind of a four cases, but you, you need to continue write to TI times TW uh, using this. So then you will get to the complete. Uh, uh, matrix representation for the regular module here. Now uh, for the regular, so this is very simple for the take uh, a clue for the L. Uh, and I want to use this kind of basic structure eventually get to the quantum uh, queer supergroup case. We now use this fundamental structure to build the structure of the supergroup. Now uh, for the uh, QE, uh, following the roadmap I mentioned, they start with special elements. Then look at some commutator relations. Then from there, your construction uh, will be eventually complete. Okay. So special elements, I just uh, uh, get some index set. Yeah, we we talk of, because this technical for the algorithm involve, involving hack algebra of uh, symmetric group. So symmetry we have young subgroups, so labeled by compositions. So I start with compositions. Then I look at the uh, standard of this kind of uh, elements, which are uh, the generators of two representation. These are the generators are like the uh, sign representation, but it's a quantum analog. So just uh, construct these two elements. Eventually, I will use this element to generate the uh, queer permutation modules. Uh, so then you need deal with the C part, uh, because this is a crippled part, right? So we introduce some long elements, it's a linear combination of CIs. Ah. So this is the very starting point. But so why do you need this? Well, you will see 
The next result, you see, if uh, your, your composition is uh, just all, one part, right? So then you hit on CQR, where CQR and CQ1R, so the longest element, right? Then you can commute. So you get some kind of a commutation uh, between the C and the X side. So these are very important in our construction. Then you look at DC, the, the XR, the uh, uh, right margin intersect with the left margin. Then you get the, in this case, an easy basis. But we basically want to generalize this to arbitrary commutation. Here is the very special case. Right. So, but we need to do a bit more. So then we introduce the so called the elements C lambda to the A. Right. So you have uh, basically from the first part, uh, you just break you in according to the young subgroup. So you break the element in pieces, then it will work. So here's the element. So your A is from, you know, it's a zero one sequence of lens in, right? And here is a composition of uh, into N part. And so you just, you see, this is CQ one to lambda one tilde. that now, that's, that's a partial sub, uh, partial sub. So it's very much like the construction Young subgroups. So this is the, if you define the Young subgroups, you use this kind of index, right? But just so you, according to Young subgroups, then you raise the power A1, A2, AN. Uh, that's, that's the idea. Uh, we use, we use these elements to commute with X lambda. Uh, X lambda times C lambda A will be C lambda A prime X lambda, see? So that's, Second level of commutation, uh, but but that will be uh, good enough. Now, in a very special case, if you look at the parabolic subalgebra hit on x lambda, then you can find the basis for this intersection. Uh, so this is uh, a little bit more complicated than the first one, but eventually we'll get to the uh, more general case. Okay. So to do the more general case, I need the matrices uh, eventually. Because uh, the, the, the basic idea was, uh, well, you have the clear q simple algorithm. Can you find a natural basis labeled by matrices? Uh, we like the matrices because with matrices, uh, every, everything, every uh, interesting things are stored in this matrix, uh, in these matrices. So anyway, so here they are very much like the, uh, uh, the queer D super algebra, right? You see, you have uh, two matrices. This is the even part. This is the odd part. Even part is just an N by N matrix with non negative entry. The odd part is the same size of matrix with zero one entry. Now, ah, with zero one entry. Then we take the, um, now that's the purpose for constructing long element. So if the first, first matrix A zero, the diagonal is zero. I call it uh, uh, plus minus. So you have only plus minus part, zero part. The diagonal just is zero. Then you look at the, uh, if there are sum, uh, if the sum of the entries uh, is uh, R, then I put a subscript R. That's, that's a labeling set for the pre L. But notice that you have two matrix, right? One is the, uh, Usual matrix, the other is zero one matrix, just the zero one, not the, not the uh, 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 grading you know, or super zero one. We just actually zero one, uh, zero one. So you can take the sum of the two matrix. This is, looks like the base of the matrix A star. A star two matrix takes the sum, you get A. From A, then you do type A convert the products. Uh, you have uh, Row sum vector takes the row sum. Every row takes the sum. You get a vector. You have column sum vector. Every column takes the sum. Then you have a distinguished coset representative DA, which is the minimum length representative. So that's the defines uniquely a double coset. Not double coset, which is useful in the type of A case. Define uh, basis natural basis for QCL. But I want to use this too. In this case, hack the Kubler case. So I, now I can view the, some more elements, this time C A star. So this is related to the order part. You have A zero, A one. So then I define T A star. These are 
elements uh, in the uh, Hecke Clifford algebra. So here's the definition. Uh, so let me first remind you, use the base A. A is the sum of these two matrices, zero, uh, even all the parts, right? Then define minimal length, double quotes that are representative, okay? So this element as a permutation can be described explicitly in the following way. For example, you're given a matrix, right, A, so you sum over the entries along the row up to Kj. Then you sum all the inches around the column up to Kj position. Then this is the column sum up to H minus 1K. So this element DA takes this value to this is the sum around the row up to Hk minus 1. That's P. Uh, P can be anything between uh, 1 and Ahk. So in other words, your DA is the following permutation. So it takes all the products of the AHK positive, then uh, you write down. It's, it's hard to follow here, but if you write down matrix, I can easily uh, work out the permutation point very easily. Uh, so that's one ingredient, purely combinatorial. And now we introduce, because I have uh, matrix A0, A1, right? So then I have the base A, so I define, you see, new is the sequence. You just read the column, column one, column two, et cetera. So that's the new. Uh, well, this composition actually defines the conjugate uh, intersection you will see uh, later. And you have the, all the part of the matrix. I also introduced the column uh, sequence. So column one, column two, this is the last column. Okay, with this. So now you define, first of all, uh, because you see, this alpha is less than or equal to nu. Uh, so therefore, I uh, can define CA star, which is C nu alpha I defined before, right? Then, this is the key element, right? TA star, uh, which is defined somewhat rel uh, related to the uh, Double coset defined by A. Now, so here's the X lambda, TDA, CA star, then plus a tail term, which is a pretty big sum. So I call it sigma A. Now, so that's the elements that we define. All right. Then I need a little bit more notations to tell you the comic. Commutation relation one, commutation relation two. For, for example, AHK plus, what's, what is this? You see, what is this? Well, this is just, a, you know, here you minus one at H plus one, K. So you just move one up a row. So at the H plus one row, you move a number one up to the next row, up. Then this matrix is just moved down a row. So that's kind of matrix which is uh, uh, very important in the multiplication formula. Then we introduce some notation about the partial row sum. This is to the left. So the arrow towards the left and this arrow towards the right is just the sum notation. Then as I did the lambda is a row sum vector and lambda tilde is a partial sum. Uh, and uh, so the first relation you see, you have some, some element product in the uh, hack algebra of type A, right? Then you hit on the TD. This is the distinguished double concept representative. Well, you can move something over, then you eventually get here in TDA HK plus. So that, that matrix in more. Uh, similarly, you have the next one, right? Well, because you have moved something over, when this something over will hit to the tail of the a matrix sigma A, then you will see this multiplication can be switched with some element in the type A hack algorithm, then times another tail, which is related to A H plus one. So this kind of a commutation formula you need to work out. So these are basically more or less within the symmetric group combinatorics, uh, symmetric group combinatorics. So here, just the sum notation. Yeah, you have the other case. Now, the symmetrical, you have the other case. 
So this is the CR1, CR2. So now, the distinguished cosine representative, double cosine representative, I have the permutation expression, right? Now I can tell you, this guy has also a reduced expression because when you do this kind of calculation, you must know explicitly a reduced expression. Then you know how to commute with the element. Uh, so that's the idea behind it. So we do this. Uh, so you have matrix A. So I take this kind of hooks up, right? This circle is the position H. Okay. Now, inches H cave here, then you take the hooks up. And this part, I take A uh, upright triangle H cave, and this uh, is uh, A H cave, lower left triangle. Okay. So then you will notice that this is the sigma is the hooks up now for every H cave. Now, for every H cave, then you can describe the Double dis, uh, distinguished cosine representative as a product of these Wij. You see, every Wij is related to a um, hook sum. Okay, so then you can write down what is Wij. Now, basically, it gives you the sequence of all simple reflections. Uh, simple reflections. So these are the information we need because if you want to know how to commute with the elements with the CIs. With the uh, packet algebra element, you, you need very uh, detailed information. So finally, commutative condition, uh, 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 commutation relation three, which, which is actually quite natural because uh, uh, when you do the B equals one case, that's all, uh, it's true. Now uh, you can basically, if without T, uh, these elements C, I, I is this number, Hit on dA equals dA times C. You see, this is the column sum. This is the lower sum up to HK minus one here, up to H minus one K. So whenever you have a matrix rise uh, for A little entry, A HK greater than zero, satisfying this relation, which has to say A satisfies so called semi direct product condition at HK. Uh, this part somewhat is very useful because when we deal with the old element multiplication formula, you need this. Ah, you need this. But anyway, so here's the other definition about HP, DT condition at the row or at the column, etc. So very uh, combinatorial here. But here's an interesting theorem which tells you uh, if A set fine as DT condition at the entry HK, if and only if this entry is positive, first of all. Secondly, uh, the lower left corner matrix at HK is zero. So you have this entry, so you have this part, this part will be completely zero. Then you get the so-called uh, HDG condition at this point. So a special case, uh, when you are in the first, uh, the first column, uh, first column, so, you do have this uh, lower left corner matrix because it's empty, ah, so it's okay. And that's the last column. Uh, below the column, you have nothing, so therefore it's also far, uh, which is actually quite important because our multiplication formula is incomplete in some sense, but when you are in the last column, it is complete. So eventually we do get, because the quantum queer supergroup, you don't need that much of uh, all the generators just to pick up a K and bar, which will be enough. Uh, so that's uh, tells you, you know, consistent with this. this pattern. Okay, we have almost uh, all the uh, main ingredients uh, for the uh, construction uh, of the high rise building. So now, what do we do? We just uh, use the elements we constructed. We build some element uh, in the Kyokushio algebra, you see? So here's the queer QC algebra. So we start with the uh, queer permutation modules. Ah, you take uh, some composition, you define, you know, the uh, right module generated by H lambda or right module generated by uh, Y lambda. Then you have a natural basis for these uh, modules. Then the interesting things you can describe, very much like the, uh, uh, the type A case, uh, this uh, right module is the intersection of some uh, 
eigen spaces, not just to use some uh, operated GSK, okay, where SK in, in the Young subgroup. Now, similarly for Y, this is this is the sign, so here's the sign. And then you can describe the home set between these two right module becomes intersection of the left module and right module. Now, some other treatment to maybe use the left and right and nine legends, but to here, uh, because that, that theory requires kind of uh, Robin's uh, L section. But here we just uh, do manually. So now you are ready to define the uh, queer Kishu algebra. So I just uh, take the direct sum of uh, all these right modules and where lambda runs over this bigger lambda in R. So these are n tuples of uh, non negative integers summing to R. Uh, summing to R. So I call it the tensor space, basically TR in lambda. And then you can get to the uh, uh, generic case when R is the uh, polynomial ring you see in Q, or R is the Laurent polynomial ring in V. So I have the two cases. Just the notation tells you what's the base uh, ring we're talking about. Okay. And uh, so N, we now construct a natural basis for the uh, queer q algebra. you see? Now, we need this. So it starts with the home set. Now, the home set is the intersection I mentioned earlier. So we first build the basis for this intersection. So this intersection are the basis. Now, you see, T A star, where you see A star is coming from this subset. Here, lambda means the base matrix A has row sum vector lambda, has column sum vector mu. So that's up naturally how uh, you get a basis. Then with this basis, now you can uh, describe basis for the queer q L. So this is a phi A star. The phi A star is defined by this member T A star. Now, just a very natural, you know, very much like the q L the case, uh, you get to the construction. But uh, because of the star, it involves have to triple the element somewhere. So when you do multiplication formula, you should be very careful. Uh, it could be very complicated. Uh, so we have also a uh, base change property, naturally. Uh, all right. So this is called the natural basis because I will eventually give you a so-called a standard basis. Uh, and so to do the multiplication formula, uh, we need some generators. So therefore, uh, I want to mention what is the key ingredients of the uh, uh, multiplication formula, okay? So you see, you want to compute phi B phi A. And uh, so what is the T A star is given by here? This is the tail, very big tail, right? Then you look at you know, phi B phi A applied to some uh, generator of the permutation module, you will get such a big uh, product, you see? Uh, so you eventually want to write this as a linear combination of T and stars, okay? And you want to find these coefficients, you see? It's, it's basically structure constants, right? Two basis elements multiplied together. How do you compute the structure constant? In general, this is very difficult, maybe impossible, but when A, when B here, B is simple enough uh, related to generators, so I can make this DB one. Now, in the even case, I can make CB star one. So it looks much better. Uh -huh. But in the older case, you still have something here which is not one. Then you have to know how to commute with this D, T, D, A. So that's the idea behind the computation. So in general, right, the computation is too complicated. Uh, we take B star to be simple enough, corresponding to a simple root, uh, corresponding simple root. And then DB is one. Uh, and in the even case, as I say, that the C part is one. And we then require some commutation relations. So this is the one I mentioned the CR1 in the very first section. I mentioned CR2, how do you uh, reorganize the tail term? Then SDP condition, I mentioned CR3. So with all these right then, you can do it. Now, so basically I need a, a permutation DA. I also need to reduce expression DA. All these available, you can do a calculation, which is still pretty long, uh, pretty long. So, Let's look at selection B star. So you have the quantum queer supergroup. 
Uh, it's generated by, you see, even generators, all the generators, a lot. And uh, I counted the number of uh, relations. It's around the 40 relations. So that's why I call it uh, a monster, you see. And, uh, and then, but when you look at the V elders, corresponding V elders, right? So there are some matrices. Of course, I have to use square matrix. I cut off the matrix to look at the top part. So these are the, uh, looks like the even case. And these are the odd case. Now, all the case. So therefore, we definitely want to pick up B to be one of the following two cases, either even cases or all the cases. So from the all the case, even case, you do multiplication for this. Okay, so fundamental multiplication formula. Ah, the even case, this is the first part we did almost 2014. Ah, for example, ah, you have all these standard notation. Ah, then you look at the multiplication. Ah, if you look at this diagonal matrix, which is even as usual, ah, diagonal case, which is even. This is the even case. The order case for the diagonal is still very complicated. Ah. And uh, this, uh, you know, positive simple roots like this here, E H H plus one, right? Has a one here. Then you have such a multiplication formula. Uh, you can work out explicitly uh, the coefficient uh, of this product. And similarly, uh, you have this uh, negative bar, like the negative bar, positive roots. So this is an even case. The other case, Ah, so now you look at the order case. All the case involved the diagonal matrix case. That's what I call the Cartan case. So the matrix, you see, this is all. This is H, H has a one. H, H position has a one. Others are zeros. Then this is diagonal, right? Then you will see if the matrix A satisfies the HD condition, SDP condition, semi-direct product condition, then you can work out explicitly the product formula. So I call it, this is like the head part, uh, head part. And then the in general, now forget about this condition. Now I have put H less than E, you need this condition. But if H equals M, no, no need. Ah, uh, because uh, we have the theorem before. Then in general, you look at the product, you have the head term, you plus a big tail. Now, uh, a big tail there. I don't know. What is the tail is, but uh, I know explicitly what the head is. But uh, for our calculation, uh, knowing the head uh, will be enough. The other positive simple root case, you do the same. Uh, do the same. So this time, your matrix is, you see, the odd, you know, positive simple roots, EHH H plus one. Then you do make the matrix multiplication. And you can write down uh, with the SDP condition, explicitly the formula. Okay? Then, in general, you have hat, uh, just this hat, together with a big long tail. Uh, just leave it there, okay? So that's the uh, all the possible case, but the all the negative simple root case is even more complicated. Uh, I will mention briefly later on. So this is the fundamental multiplication formula. Next, we want to standardize everything. Uh, I have only three minutes left. So standardize everything. So what do we do? First of all, we standardize the q uh, super algebra, clear q super algebra by introducing you know, the sign. Now, because for simplicity, we forget about sign before, now we introduce sign. So therefore, you have to introduce new natural basis elements with the sign. And then you have to standardize this long C element. Then, you have get to this now, I change C to O because O looks more symmetrical, right? So you basically make it symmetrical. But the scalar here is a product of the two, like a dot product of two matrices. And then you introduce square bracket A star. So that's a standard matrix we used uh, eventually. Anyway, so now multiplication formula, short and long. So with the standard, everything standardized, with the standard basis, now you can look at the short multiplication formula. So that's the even case. Now, well, with the sign, in this case, sign doesn't matter because it's odd. Now it's odd. But uh, you have the, uh, uh, some the justification of the new, new value. But anyway, I left it there. Uh, I leave this there. Now, 
But if you make a comparison with this product with the QGRD case, QGRD case it only involves this part. But in the pure case, you have another matrix that's for the all the matrix part. Uh, it's uh, quite complicated. But then I have some uh, explanation about this, but I don't have time to explain. But anyway, shut multiple cases. All the case is very difficult. Ah, this is the all the generators. You have all the case. So you have a head term and you have an undetermined big tail. Yeah, perhaps AI can do it, but at the moment we can't do it. So I'll give you some examples. You see, this is the uh, uh, SDD condition. Under SDD condition, you can write explicitly what this is, but in general, you just have a big tail. Ah, big tail here. You don't know what this is. But for the negative case, you even have another part, which is Q minus one. So it should be V square minus one. This is uh, actually uh, zero when V equals one, uh, when V equals one. So that's the case. And uh, so then you have uh, long element. So we have the standard basis. Now we use the standard basis to define the linear combination, define the long element. This time the matrix A0 has long diagonal zeros. Then you add up to the diagonal, then you're summing up all the diagonals. That's the idea. Uh -huh. And then you have the long element. So I just give you one example. What is the long multiplication of long element? It breaks up into three parts. One, two, three. So I show you. One is this big sum. Two is this big sum. And the three is this big sum. So these are, can be all computed uh, in the uh, long multiplication formula. And uh, so there are also explicit formula, but uh, not for the even case, this is an even case, but for the odd case, I have only the head of that, uh, not the general case. Okay. So the key point is all coefficient when you finish this calculation, depending on increase of your matrix A, and your J, but uh, independent of your R, independent of R. So that's why my R can vary. I can take the direct product. I can get uh, invaded. So finally, the regular part. So I have just the two theorems. One theorem is the, uh, uh, you have a map from the quantum field supergroup to the clear tissue algebra. So this is uh, uh, algebra homomorphism, uh, algebra homomorphism. So you have to check all for the relations, uh, but the sum of trivial, uh, some are pretty hard. But anyway, we did it. Then you invade into it, their direct product. Then you can find their image and you can prove. Uh, uh, once you got to the injection, you get to the regular presentation uh, in terms of this basis, uh, this new basis. So that's all. The proof is very. Uh, Long and uh, but uh, I just mentioned uh, something here because I run on my time and uh, finally uh, work in progress. Uh, this is uh, just uh, tells you uh, the the clear case basically generalize the quantum linear case. You have kind of commutate commut uh, commutate diagrams here and but I want to mention a few applications: integral sure while Olshansky theory, polynomial representation, and loose unity. These are Still in progress. I think we will get it done by involution canonical basis. That's a bigger part, but we have we're doing that, but they need more time. And uh, modify quantum queer supergroups or canonical basis. We can do these. We believe this is all true. Finally, uh, semi simple state criterion and uh, 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 representation type, etc. Uh, I think you may follow. Dote, Nakano, Emma Nakano's work, you can do all these things. Okay? Sorry for overuse. Three minutes. Thank you. Give the city how. Questions? It's called a paper space. You make that into a real paper space. Yes, we have isomorphism. In a, in a paper published, uh, I think, a journal for our square and yeah. So that is a paper product. Yes, yeah. or just to use a pencil product originally. We tried to break this into the direct sum of commutation models 
with the communication module, we know what first we can do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just, there is a work by um, on uh, Christopher Wait, I think when I remember the phrase by this, yes, but uh, uh, I because we have yet uh, our canonical, uh, just uh, we're thinking about something. So if, once if we can do something with the part of the connection, okay. Yeah, yeah no problem. <laughs> Oh, the modern one. Okay, that's good. Well, we 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 can we are too interested in for another one because of the show what the early tech integral level. We work out the representation for the packet filter algebra. Then we build up to the only view. So that's a good one here. Yeah. 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 So have you thought about it in the pair of flexibility? What is it? Thank you. Did you look at the pair of flexibility? Yes. She asked about the pair of flexibility. Thank you. No. Said no. I'm, not, I'm saying no very strongly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not expert in these two values. <laughs> okay. Other questions? Yes, so uh, a question regarding the uh, the hook sum matrices. So let me tell you the A statement. So if A1 and A2 are communication matrices, the, they are uh, first length communication are less than the other in the group of order, means that uh, if you take these uh, hook sum matrices, the matrices are like entry wise less or equal to the other. You have a similar statement for your hook sum matrices. I'm, I'm not very sure because our hook sum matrices can be used to, to deal with the reduced expression of the other process in the case. I suppose if you want to move on the blue, I will order a little bit. Right, right. So yeah. I can say that there may be something to say by comparing these matrices entry wise. They may there be some, I don't know, information among the uh -huh. analog of entry model. Um, okay. Thanks. That's what we're going to get. Other questions? You saw a typo in there. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> they would be happy to hear about that. Also. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be studying your red factory for this series. I need the more time to understand it. <laughs> All right. So we've got a break now for community talking in that. We'll be back in 30 minutes.